Hey, what's up everybody? It's Mr. A. Today we're here at Foothill High School in Bakersfield, California with Sergeant Rob Kreider from the California Highway Patrol with the MATE program or the Multidisciplinary Accident Investigation Team. How you doing, Rob? Good. How you doing, Tony? Good. Thanks for coming out today. Sweltering heat, 100 plus. You might have to scoop me off the pavement a little bit later as I melt. But uh, in the meantime, tell me a little bit about your background. How long have you been with the CHP? I've been with the Higher Patrol for over 11 years, but I've with, been with the CHP MATE team for six years. Okay, tell me a little bit about the MATE team and what you guys do. Well, as you mentioned before, MATE is an acronym for Multidisciplinary Accident Investigation Team. And what that means is that our team is comprised of a number of experts in different disciplines. So we have a Caltrans engineer who, who works with the roadway. We have ASC certified mechanics who look at how vehicles work, the brakes, the steering, all those things. And we have accident reconstructionists who are CHP officers who've been through enormous amount of reconstruction training dealing with geometry, trigonometry, physics to apply different uh, Newton's laws of physics to vehicle collisions to determine how fast vehicles were going in the collision. That's great. So you guys use math, physics, and all that good stuff all the time. That's right. We use math in the real world every day to determine how fast a car is going after a crash. And we were kind of talking about this a little bit earlier. You originally had no plans to use math. You kind of celebrated that last math class. Yes, I did. Yes, that. I did. In college, I was a liberal arts major, so there wasn't a lot of math to be taken. And so when I had my final math class done, I was celebratory. I was done with it. I didn't have to take any more math. And then as life cur throws your curveball every once in a while, then I found out later when I was with the CHP mate, I was going to have to go back to college and take geometry, physics, trigonometry to really make sure I understood those uh, classes because we use that math every day in mate. Now obviously with mate you guys use some of the more advanced stuff and is this something that every CHP officer has to know or I know that uh, some CHP officers do some work at the scene and uh, you might follow up with some of the more complex stuff, but run me through just the gamut of the stuff that you would use in, in the CHP. Well, every CHP officer will use a little bit of math, but they won't have to do the extensive math that we're doing at MATE. So every officer does his own training in accident investigation at the academy, and they investigate accidents every single day. It's only when an accident is a little more complicated, there's some part of the accident that they can't quite solve, they may bring MATE in to help them determine how fast is this vehicle going. We have many different ways that we can actually solve the speed of a vehicle or the causation for collision. Some of those might be measuring skid marks, we might be measuring the crush of a vehicle, we might download the airbag control module and, uh, and look at all sorts of different you know, Newtonian physics equations to help relate how uh, real world uh, stuff like in a collision can give us the answer we're looking for and answer how this crash happened. Great. Now I'm not going to be the pedestrian in this example, No, right? no, we, just... we'll, we'll miss you. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate that. So we've got a car here that came to rest after driving a certain distance and left some pretty good skid marks for us. We call yeah, them tire okay. friction marks because it is the friction between the tire and the roadway that leaves these pieces of rubber out here. Okay. So we'll kind of mark these off and we're going to determine which one came from which tire. I'm very interested in the one that came from the left front tire. You can kind of see it's offset there. We're going to follow this back and try to find the beginning of the mark and then that will be give us the distance we need to know how much work was done. And the mark starts to get pretty light about here. This is the trick to try to determine where that actual tire friction mark began. Let's go with that. So we're going to call this the beginning of our tire friction mark. And then we're going to use a regular tape measure like you'd use building a project at home to try to figure out how long the skid mark is. All right, let's do it. Here we go. So we know this is 50 feet. Okay. And we know that this is 50 more feet, so we'll do some real simple math here. 100. <laughs> and no calculator. No calculator even. for that one. I'm impressed. <laughs> so 100 plus 2 gives us 102 feet. Right on the money. So that's how much work was done. 102 feet worth of work was done in this collision. Okay. So we want to actually determine what does that mean. We'll use this equation. We know that velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times gravity times the distance times friction, okay? We know what gravity is, it's 32.2 feet per second squared. And we know the friction of the roadway between this surface and a California Harbor Patrol car tires. We do a lot of testing of that, that's okay. 0.75. Okay. And now we know the distance because we measured it. So All we'll do right. the equation again. Applying the, put in the variables, velocity is equal and this answer is going to be in feet per second. And the reason for that is the distance we're putting into the equation is feet, and the answer we're going to get out of it is going to be feet per second. All right. So square root 
of 2 times gravity, which is 32.2, .2, times the distance we measured, 102, which is how hot is outside of the well, <laughs> <laughs> times the friction, which is 0 0.75. And then we'll pull out the calculator for this one. This one I won't do in my head. Well, and this is a great example of what we were talking about earlier, just plugging numbers into a calculator or a machine. You get some number back. You have to know what that is. Like you talked exactly. about, we're going to get this number back, which is feet per second, but we need miles per hour. Right. Okay. Because you know the speed limit of the school zone is 25 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. If I give you this, the speed in feet per second and you think it's miles an hour, you'll have the wrong answer. Okay. So we're going to do this equation real quick here. The square root of 2 times gravity, 32.2, .2, times the distance, 102 feet, times the friction, 0 0.75 equals 70.19 feet per second. So this equals 70.19 feet per second. That doesn't do us much good, does it? No. We need this answer in miles per hour. Exactly. So we're going to have to convert it from feet per second to miles per hour. Okay. To do that, we're going to use unit analysis. Okay? okay. So we know that, let's say we're looking at 70 feet per second. Really, that's 70 over 1 times feet over seconds. And that's what feet per second is. It's feet over seconds. That's where right. per comes from. Okay? Now, we know how many... Uh, we want to get rid of feet, so let's go ahead and put this, multiply it times one, because we want miles on top. So one mile is equal to 5,280 feet, okay? So now we can cross out feet. Now we're trying to get miles and hours, but now we're at miles and seconds. We need to get rid of the seconds. Okay. So we're going to multiply it again times one, okay? Got seconds at the bottom. For 60 seconds, I have one minute. So we'll cross out seconds. Now we have miles over minutes. Still not there. So how many minutes are in an hour? Let's get to hours. 60 minutes over one hour. Now we get rid of minutes. So we're left with 70 times 60 times 60 divided by 5,280. All right. Doesn't sound like much, but the answer will be from 70 feet per second to what number miles per hour? Okay. So we'll go 70 times 60 times 60 divided by 5,280. Our answer is 47.72 miles an hour. Wow. 48 miles an hour. So okay. how fast was the car going when it slid to a stop? Based on physics, and we know Newton's right, he was going 48 miles per hour in a 25 mile an hour zone. Wow. And I think that's a great lesson also for not just the math, but for some of these kids that are out there driving and they're pushing the speed limit that in order for them to stop just going 48 miles per hour, it's going to take them 102 feet. That's right. And so by the time that they see that kid in the street, it's too late. That's correct. That's why you got to slow down. Okay. Good deal. Well, that was great. I mean, we hit everything. Fractions, division, unit analysis. Even some addition here with the uh, <laughs> adding up the, the measurements. That's right. Basic measurements. We got velocity. To me, I don't see how any student could go in saying, hey, I'm just going to get a job in law enforcement because there's no math there. There's going to be some math. Right. Well, I appreciate this. This is great. Thanks. No problem. Rob, thank you so much for that example. That was, that was amazing. I, I'd never even seen that, uh, that application before in, in this kind of context, so I really appreciate that. No problem. Um, any parting words that you might want to share? Well, as we display today that some police officers use handcuffs to take people to jail, but in mate, we can actually use a calculator to put people in jail. Don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> <laughs>